Hello, I'm Tim Andrewotha. I work for the British Council in Japan. I've worked at two universities in Japan for the British Council. Currently, I'm at Hitotsubashi University. Last year, I was at Chiba University and the materials I'm talking about in this presentation, I made to use at Chiba University. The presentation is called A Global Approach to Discussion Class Materials, uh, and I hope it gives you some ideas uh, to use in English discussion classes. Now I'll look at the outline for my presentation. I will talk about my teaching context before explaining the term global Jinzai. Then I'll introduce a global approach uh, for teaching English, which includes global Englishes and intercultural communication. This approach was used to make a discussion class method, which I used to create two lessons, English in Singapore and individualism versus collectivism. I'll also talk about how this method can be used to create more lessons. So now let's look at the teaching context. So these materials uh, I created were for advanced university discussion classes. Uh, students uh, had to discuss different topics each lesson and there was ongoing assessment based on participation in class and there was a final assessed discussion at the end of each term. Now let's look at the term global Jinzai. Uh, global Jinzai uh, means global human resources and it's a popular term and goal in tertiary education in Japan. Uh, one reason is Japan's aging society, which means it's imperative for Japanese businesses to expand globally. The government's definition of global Jinzai includes the ability to understand other cultures. This is a global approach to teaching English. It combines global Englishes and intercultural communication. The aim is to prepare learners to communicate with people all over the world. I did a presentation about this approach last year at PANSIG. Okay, so from Global Englishes, uh, lessons should raise awareness of Global Englishes and emphasize respect for diverse culture and identity. So that's according to Galloway, who did research in a Japanese university. And from intercultural communication, learners should develop awareness of themselves, their own culture and cultural differences. That's according to Yoshida, Yashiro and Suzuki, who uh, did some research in Japan. Uh, they did a focus group with Japanese business people. Let's look at global Englishes more closely. So Global Englishes includes World Englishes, for example, Indian English, Jamaican English, Kenyan English, Singaporean English, and the many other varieties of English around the world. Also, Global Englishes includes English as a lingua franca. So English as a lingua franca, also known as ELF, is a global communication tool between speakers of different mother tongues and it is the most common use of English. And it's used in uh, different ways uh, from the way it's used, English is used by native speakers. It's used in a more flexible and fluid way as the speakers adapt to the situation. Now let's look at intercultural communication. So Hofstadter's cultural dimensions are very useful for helping us to understand the way uh, culture influences the way people feel, think and behave. Uh, his or original research revealed four cultural dimensions 
uh, individualism, power distance, masculinity, and uncertainty avoidance. He later, later added two more, long-term orientation and indulgence. So uh, the cultural dimensions are very useful, uh, but it's also important to be aware that there is some criticism of the cultural dimensions. Uh, for example, someone who learns about the cultural dimensions uh, might then uh, presume that someone from a certain country will behave in a certain way. Uh, this is known as an essentialist view of culture. Whereas an, in a non-essentialist view of culture, uh, we don't presume that an individual person would behave in a particular way because he comes from a particular country. Uh, <clears throat> because we are aware of the complexity of culture and that people are constantly uh, negotiating their cultural identities. Also, it's important to think about small culture. So the cultural dimensions are about national uh, culture at the national level, but there are also uh, lots of small cultures among different communities and different groups of people. Okay, so here is the discussion class method that I used, uh, which, which came from the global approach. So first, uh, choose issues and concepts from Global Englishes uh, or intercultural communication. Then there is some reading. Uh, the issues and concepts are introduced, including necessary vocabulary. Then there are some questions to check the understanding of the issues, concepts and vocabulary. And then finally, uh, in the production stage, students can show a deeper understanding of the issues and concepts through discussion. So the first uh, lesson that I'm going to tell you about is about English in Singapore. And uh, I chose uh, this topic because understanding the role of Singlish is beneficial to understand the connection between varieties of English and cultural identity. Okay, so at the beginning of the lesson, the students uh, discuss this question before reading the text. What do you know about English in Singapore? So now I'll give you some time to read the text. So here are some questions. I'll give you some time to read them and think about your answers. Okay, and now I'll show you the answers. Okay, so now we go on to the discussion stage. So finally, uh, the students uh, have a chance to say their opinions by discussing the question, what do you think about Singlish and the Speak Good English movement? So I, I found that 
this lesson went well. The students were really interested about English in Singapore and they were able to have some interesting discussions uh, giving their opinions about Singlish and the Speak Good English movement. Okay, so we'll now go on to the next lesson that I created. Individualism versus collectivism. So individualism is one of Hofstadter's cultural dimensions. And understanding individualism versus collectivism is essential in understanding the difference between Western and Asian cultures. So at the beginning of the lesson, the students uh, discuss uh, what do the terms individualism and collectivism mean? So now I'll give you some time to read the text. Okay, so after reading the text, the students need to write I individualism or C collectivism by each of these sentences. I'll give you some time to read them and, and think about your answers. Okay, so now I'll show you the answers. Okay, so at this stage, the students get a chance to have a discussion with these questions. Do you think Japanese culture is more individualistic or collectivistic? Why? Have you ever experienced any cultural differences related to individualism versus collectivism? What happened and how did you feel? So I found this lesson went well as well. The students were yeah, interested in, were also interested in this topic and they had some very interesting discussions. And the students referred back to individualism and collectivism and also they referred back to, to English in S Singapore, so later on in the course. Okay, so this presentation uh, looked at a global approach to discussion class materials. So the glo global approach uh, includes global Englishes and intercultural communication. And the aim of the approach is to prepare learners to communicate with people all over the world. And this is the discussion class method that I used uh, to create some lessons uh, using the global approach. So the two lessons that I showed you were English in Singapore and individualism versus collectivism. So more lessons uh, could be created using the method so from Global Englishes, there could be uh, more lessons on different varieties of English. For example, Indian English, Jamaican English, Kenyan English, or 
uh, other varieties of English from around the world. Uh, also, there could be lessons about English as a lingua franca. From intercultural communication, uh, there could be uh, lessons on the other cultural dimensions, such as power distance, long-term orientation, masculinity, uncertainty, avoidance, and indulgence. Um, it would also be important to cover uh, the difference between an, event, an essentialist view of culture and a non-essentialist view of culture, uh, as well as covering uh, small culture as well. Okay, and here are the references that I used in this presentation. Uh, I hope that uh, this presentation has given you some ideas uh, for topics uh, in English discussion classes uh, with higher level, high level students. Uh, I think by using uh, the method, yeah, this approach and this method, uh, it can help uh, learners prepare to communicate with people all over the world. Okay, thank you very much for listening to my presentation and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.